but the real power here lies with the girls and the young women because they love it and, and, and authentically so. Boys are allowed to make mistakes. Be boys. Girls have to be perfect. You should wake up, talk to me. You didn't sleep for two and a half hours. 93,000 miles. And I think before we started coming down here so much, maybe we were at 69,000, maybe something like that. And then on the weekends, I have to wake up at six in the morning. So it's not the best all the time, but I know that we need it. So I always try to make it here. I am the Journey Robinson, six foot outside, 17 years old, commit to LSU. Let's go, on 17 G. Ah. NIT champs, two P, well not for me, cause I won't be on seventh grade yet, but two P for the rest of them. So I started when I was 11 years old in sixth grade and my parents kind of like forced me into a sport because I didn't really want to play a sport when I was younger. It was sort of just, I want to see how my body grew because I was like 5'5 five five in sixth grade and that was, I was taller than everybody else when they were 4'11". So it was sort of, my parents were like, well, you have to sort of be in a sport. You have to use your height. So that's what sort of threw me the volleyball. The older I got, the more I'm like, okay, Journey, this isn't just about you, this is about your other teammates. And I remember um, we talked to Journey and going into 16s, we we're like, are you coming? She's like, no, this year I'm just gonna stay because the drive is two and a half hours. We're like, you live where? <laughs> um, I started playing volleyball at the YMCA League and probably when I was nine. And then I went to A5 12 Jing at 12, so I've already played with him for, been at A5 ever since. Um, I'm going to college at Yale University. A libero basically is in the different colored jersey. They never move to front row. They're the only position that can do that, and they always stay back row. Them and the six rotation outside or five one setter are the only positions that stay on the floor the entire time. I am Rebecca Watkins. I play for A5 17 Jing, and I am a setter. When I set the ball and I like, and they get a like monster kill, I know like all the praise is gonna go to them because it's like always the hitters, and I'm like totally happy for them. My name is Ashley Sterzoyu. I'm an outside on A5 17G. I, I think the fact that you could just like hit the ball as hard as you wanted to, like that's just like. Jing is a great coach. Um, he just helps us a lot, just trying to get us better to the next level. He always putting in like trick plays and just stuff to get better. Like some practices we have like just workout, some practices we do defense, offense. It's just a mix of everything that will help us. After graduating from high school, I went to a professional volleyball club. I played over 20 years. After that, I Stop, stop playing because I got a knee injured and it kind of really, really bothered me. And so I st stopped playing volleyball and started coaching volleyball. But my first coaching career is, was in Chinese women's national team as assistant coach. When I played the men's national team, my team during that time, we didn't qualify for the Olympic, but I coached the women's national team when they were uh, uh, play Atlanta Olympic about 1996. Volleyball is a sport that is ideally suited for the 21st century. What other sport do you get reinforcement every 10 to 15 seconds? The game is extraordinarily attractive to young women. It is, uh, it might be the ultimate cooperative game. The game itself, it, it's arguably the fastest game in the world, fastest team game in the world fits the 21st century, where we're, we're all speed oriented about everything, right? Combination of those, and then, quite frankly, Title IX. Isn't Title IX like the women and sports thing? Yeah, it's about the fairness scholarship thing. Title IX in 1972 gave girls and women the opportunity to have teams and to play. Yeah. But if you look across sports, there's no reason 
that volleyball should be where it is today in the United States. After the start of Title IX, boys' volleyball started to decline quite dramatically. Volleyball became identified as a girls' sport. If, again, you look across sports, so you look at basketball, softball, baseball, you look at soccer, the women's, women's sport chase a more popular male counterpart. And in volleyball, that was never true. The women's version of volleyball in the United States is the alpha expression of the sport. There were other sports that were like this, uh, field hockey, women's gymnastics, but for many years, they shrunk. Volleyball went in absolutely the opposite direction. I didn't realize there were only 12 schools in the state of Georgia to play. Six public, six private. And we ended up having about 10 or 11 on that first team. There was no junior ball in the South. We had to play open adult women's ball. The colleges got to play. Why so we played Tennessee, Alabama, Georgia, North Carolina. Now, they weren't who they are now, right? But that said, these were still skilled athletes competing with these nondescript 14, 15 year old girls out of Georgia. Well, now we have a thousand people in this system. You know, we have eight or 900 in this gym. We have a 70,000 square foot facility. That progression to get here is astonishing from my perspective. I just, I look at it often and just shake my head and go, how, how is that possible? So the very last point of NIT, um, the ball was set and it was really tight. And Journey like got the kill, but she landed like on the like padding and like her whole like leg just like completely went like sideways. And so my leg sort of stiffened up. It's like in the video, it's kind of weird, but like my leg stiffens up and it feels like my leg is just like hyperextended. So like it went straight, but in the video, like my leg was just bent like this. So, and so I fell to the ground and I felt it all like in my shin area instead of my ankle or my knee. And so when we went to the doctor, they said it was actually both. And if I didn't have on my ankle brace, I probably would have broken my ankle. I've never seen personally like competition at 17 years old like that because they're all huge and like over six foot. So and come back, come back to the gym and, and we just only have a two practice before we play the big song. Volleyball is a miracle sport. Funny story, uh, actually uh, Randy was part of a crew of people at USA Volleyball trying to figure out how to get volleyball growth going around the country. And they came up with this concept of national qualifiers to kind of encourage the most competitive teams to attend the national championships. At that time we were running a club program. So we said, sure, well, you know, well, we can run a tournament. So we did the first year and I think we had maybe 40 teams in the tournament that first year in Tampa. Well, now when we come into Atlanta, currently we're using over 95 hotels. Um, we have about 30,000 room nights in those hotels. Um, we're, it's about a $29 million impact on the city. So it's, it's kind of hard not to see when we're in town. Um, right now there are about 15,000 athletes and around 40,000 spectators. It just has steadily grown because I believe last year, I'm sure COVID had um, something to do with it and everyone was really anxious to start playing. We were on Easter and it was by far the biggest tournament we've ever had. If you're walking through the venues, you will see 
multiple uh, ex-professional right. athletes. We have uh, a captive audience. I mean, we probably have over 400 college coaches here walking from court to court, looking at exactly who they want to look at in terms of what their needs are for the upcoming seasons. When I walk into these convention centers, almost every time I walk in, I'm in awe. They're so good. <laughs> I mean, the level of volleyball that young women are playing is something I, I didn't envision as fast as it is. So they're stronger, faster, you know, the development, I mean, there's a specialized strength and conditioning training. There's experienced volleyball coaches able to teach the game now at a higher level. What young girl doesn't want to be part of this? There's no question that the level of athletes is getting deeper. You know, it was almost automatic if you were touching 10 feet, you were going to a Power 5 program. Now you're seeing players spread throughout Division 1 that are over 10 feet. And now the elite attackers are touching, you know, close to 11 feet. You know, even if, even if that player isn't on your team, they're on the other team, it's making you play at a higher level. So um, I think it's making everyone better. and it's very family there are, you know you can see all the families that travel along with this a lot of these families are making their you know vacation times out of a weekend that they go away so my mom played collegially at Valparaiso and my dad coached for the longest time but my parents actually met playing a grass tournament and that's like how they met and started like like and now they're like married obviously but like my dad's cheering is um it's uh, different it's he's he acts our age, so I don't know, it's kind of childish, but I guess he enjoys himself, and I guess he brings energy to the team, so I guess I can't complain. It's kind of embarrassing, but, you know, that's him. But here in, in, in the A5 community, the parents are so engaged and so involved and so helpful. We couldn't do it for our children without each other. We're, we're checking on each other, we're praying for each other, we're laughing with each other, we uh, cry when we lose, so, you know, that's a joy in itself. Trust. It teaches, it teaches her to trust. Women, we feel like we're always one of those that have to end up trying to do something more to climb the corporate ladder or to do something like that. Volleyball teaches them to trust and power and like work together as women. In South Carolina, we felt like things would just be given to Journey and we knew that, that that's not gonna be realistic. So we knew by bringing her to A5 or just you know another club at a, at a higher uh, competitive level that it would prepare her for the next level. So she would know that she has to fight for, to get a position and she has to fight to keep that position. It's not just gonna be given you know, to you, that you're gonna have to fight for everything that you want. And especially as a, as a, you know, a black child, as a black woman, you're gonna have to fight. You know, It's not just about having a degree, which is awesome, that's gonna prepare you. It's not just being good. We don't want you to be just another dumb jock. We want you to be a smart, educated black woman and be prepared for any and everything that comes your way. And A5 has definitely taken her to another level. Because we live so far and Journey has to get on the road, a lot of times she will do homework in the car on the way down there. Uh, when she gets home at 12, 1 o'clock in the morning, she'll sometimes study if she has a big test the next day. But I'm very, very proud to say that throughout all of this, the journey grade point average has actually gone up. She has almost a 4.0 now. Um, so we, that's what we're most proud about. To say I'm proud of my daughter um, is an understatement. Her level of strength, what she's willing to sacrifice, I can't ask for anything more. She's amazing. She's respectful. She, lit, she wants to be coached. I don't care how good people tell her she is, we tell her you can always be better. You can always learn from your coaches, from your teammates. Um, sorry. We're proud. We are very, very proud parents. So yeah. You can see it, whatever goes wrong in her day, for those 40 minutes when she's on that court, 
see that piece. Let him know the chance is here, the chance is here. It moves very quickly. Right. There's something new happening every 10 to 15 seconds. In that sense, it's entertaining because there's always action. Both teams come together. Hey, let's repeat that. Let's do this better. And so it breathes. So you have these short bursts of intense action, and then you have these short breaks. But in the short breaks, you see a community, you see a exchange of looks and touches. You see, for the most part, joy. I was a super emotional player myself. Anger played a part, joy played a part. Uh, I was fired up, I was excited, I was all those different things. And But I, what I truly believe is when you step onto our team or onto our court, you know and we encourage that emotion, but we know it has to be within the framework of the, the team. When I get mad on the court, I'm just like taking that, like making it, like making me play better. Like if there's a bad call or like the, like a girl on the other team like says something or like has like a smart remark, it's almost like like you want to like prove them wrong. Did I see what I just see? Did I see what I just see? Come on, Ashley. I'm always amazed at former players that love me today and when we were together hated me as often as they loved me. The feeling was mutual. You know, in other words, I didn't love them every moment either. But it it was something that we went through together that was difficult, that was really, really hard, and yet was incredibly gratifying and bonding. 17-9. Uh We've got to figure out how to get past that front line. It's, uh, we've got to figure it out. And right now we're not doing it. Uh, we're playing defeated and that's not how our girls play. So we got to clean it up. So in ruts, um, the points go by really fast. Like they go serve and either be like a bad pass and then there's the point or something like that. So basically what we do is we slow the game down and with us, we jingle tell us the tire shoe or we just stay in a huddle and we'll talk. We just need one point to get out of it because I feel like we're a team who does really good in service. And um, so once we get back on the serve and start getting momentum again, we can start pushing it and getting more points. Ridiculous! Oh, 
And so during that game, they just like sort of took over and we didn't have a chance to sort of rekindle like what we've been working on this whole season. So I think like that was the problem, just them taking like taking over the game and we just didn't know how to fix it. They were just bigger than us in terms of like hitting and blocking. And I feel like that kind of overpowered us in terms of they could just basically have a free for all during the court. But it was okay, we still were pretty competitive in the set and we'll probably get them next time because, I mean, yeah. My team keeps saying we didn't play our best, but I honestly thought we gave a pretty good fight against them. Like, yeah, like, we were kind of like outnumbered and we knew that like with height and like skill-wise and everything like that, but. During the Big South final, we were really upset at each other because we were like, why can't you dig that ball? Like, why can't you block them? But then like when you look back at the film, it's like, Journey, they're all like six foot and above. We are like average is six foot, so. I would say that greatness is hard. And if you have a vision of volleyball heaven and you want to go there, you're going to have to die. And that's another way of saying that being great is very, very difficult. And it has pain. It has you convincing your heart that you should keep going as opposed to quitting when every fiber in you says stop. It has dealing with pain, potentially injury, and surviving that. But that will be anything that you accomplish in life that's really significant. No, that helps you no, when I tell you to no, find your spot. Just...
Yeah, that means me to look for a spot to hit. It, it messes going, me up. It doesn't. It I doesn't can't mess you up. Yes, it, it does. You, you're hard headed, child. That's your problem. Hard headedness. Hard-headed. Hard-headed. They don't think you know anything when you do. Watch yourself.